It's time. Throwing that grenade. That's right. Throwing year 2021. Just like that grenade. <laughs> get it out of here. Because it's year 2022. Got to get used to saying that, Rick. How are you doing, my friend? Oh, I'm awesome. I'm awesome. As I, you know, I, I just, again, I wanted to thank you for giving me this opportunity because I already did this episode on my podcast and I screwed the pooch. <laughs> One of the worst podcasts I've done because I was just, I was so excited about it. I just yeah. verbal diarrhea. <laughs> and, I, and, and I couldn't even find good words. I wanted to describe each movie precisely and give you insight as to why I yeah. thought it was the best of the worst. That yeah. Which is like, uh, to me, it was it was almost an hour of me going, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm so happy you gave me this platform so I can yes, hopefully, yes. hopefully yeah. do a better job. Yeah. <laughs> well, I still want to, you know, I had to know what Kung Fu Santa had to say about us, about these movies. I just, everybody's here. That's why everybody's here watching right now because they've already heard Samurai. Like I'm exhausted, Rick. Like our best and the worst video we did Saturday was like three and a half hours. <laughs> Oh, and I was like so much energy and ranting on the stuff I hated so much. I'm like, I'm like spent. So I will not probably won't rant as bad tonight. But, but those uh, are have... the best movies of the year, not just the best action, right? This is movies, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. This is action. Um, this is specifically action. Right, right. And I can so, see in your intro, you have a bunch I don't have. Okay. Have All right. That I don't have either on best or worst. Copy that. And I think everybody watching right now, I'm I, I'm calling it right now. Some of Samurai's favorites is probably going to be on Rick's worst, but it's all good. It's yeah, all good. And, here to and have fun. Hopefully, my absolute favorites, my top three, I think okay. will be. I think we'll both agree on the top. Okay. Three. Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah. So those of you who are just watching, chiming in right now, we got Kung Fu Santa in the house. That's right. Get the books. Get the movies. The DVDs. Films of Fury. All that good stuff. Awesome <laughs> content. For and sure. Don't, don't forget, you know, for next year's stocking stuff for the Santa Confidential. Well, I should have sold that harder during the Christmas season, but I'll start selling it now for a <laughs> getting an, an early word in on it. Get it get it yeah. get it going now. Send me an right. email ask Santa anything at gmail.com and there it is. get your there autographed is. copy That's with right. your right. book bookcase by the great Chris Hager, the horrible brown. There you go. All right, let's see who's here from the Movie Dojo Army hanging out with us tonight. We got Jake Hall in the house. Lone Wolf Ronan, he says, uh, what's up, Samurai and Kung Fu Santa? Bring the ruckus. We're going to bring the ruckus. That's right. Who else we got here uh, tonight? We got Will. What's going on? Uh, he, Happy New Year, Kung Fu Santa, Will says. There we go. And uh, Samuel Stokes in the house. Severio, the sexy sumo. He says, hail to the kings, baby. And we have Heather. Oh, yeah. All right. And by the way, guys, start segueing from because Happy New Year is over. Get ready for a Kong Hei Fat Joy, baby. Kong Hei Fat Joy, Year of the Tiger, February 1st. There you go. <laughs> Are you going to oh, teach me Tiger I style? Panther. That was Panther. I want Tiger. There we go. All right. You're going to teach me Tiger style maybe this year, Rick. Oh, my pleasure. My All right. Pleasure. Cool. I'd like to know that. Yeah. Uh, Lady Danis says here, I always love hearing from Rick. Thank That's you. right. Oh, I know Lady Danish. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, James here uh, says 
He watched all the Roni Kenshin movies last week, and my God, that has to be some of the best uh, favorite film series of all time. Look at that. All right, we're getting it started. Samurai sword action. Awesome. Yeah. You got ready clips here. What's going on, brothers? Is Hail Sifu Santa? <laughs> dude, dude, stand up. Stand up. <laughs> stand dude, sit down. Sit down. No standing. All right, we're gonna we're gonna jump right into it. Uh, Samurai guy's gonna go first for some of my picks for the best action films of last year, and then we'll go to Rick's list because everyone's here to see Rick's list. But I will chime in on some of the films I did enjoy this year for sure. All right, so first up, they're, they're kind of together. They're two different movies, but I'm putting them on here for fun because it was very entertaining. You have two sci-fi action movies that were made for the midnight crowd. And, uh, you know, get the, get the fellas together, beer, pizza, and it's just a popcorn blast fest. And we have Skylines here, which is the third in the series. Uh, this is just like, man, if you enjoy Aliens, if uh, Daniel Bernhardt has a really badass fight scene that came out of nowhere <laughs> in this, which was amazing. Uh, I, we have a female lead that's very convincing and not a uh, Mary Sue, uh, is, is what people call that, use that word a lot. She's badass. And it's just a, it's just a fun popcorn flick. I love uh, both of these films. And we also have another sci-fi alien invasion type movie uh, we have here. Occupation. That's right. The sequel, Rainfall. Uh, and this is the uh, it's another just fun movie. You know, I, I had a director, Luke Spark, on here and Liam O'Donnell. And this is something very new to the country of Australia. They don't have uh, sci-fi movies like this. So this is brand new for them. So we're rooting for them, you know, that, so that way they can keep making fun sci-fi flicks. You know, and we even have alien on alien combat. That's right. The alien <laughs> comes down with the swords, fights the other aliens, and we all have fun there. But yeah, this is. I thought you were going to say something else. Oh. <laughs> alien on alien action. <laughs> That's uh -huh. in the uh, director's cut there. There we go. Uh, but a shout out to Liam O'Donnell uh, giving us that popcorn fun. This is the third in this trilogy. I recommend you watch all three films in a row. Uh, it's a lot more enjoyable that way. And this is the second film in the new trilogy right here. So there is a third Occupation movie coming. So those are those are a lot of fun. All right. Uh, shout out to my man, uh, Fansu here. If you guys are tired of your action heroes, you know, looking like <laughs> handsome lead singers from a from a sexy boy band. Are you tired of your action heroes looking that looking looking that way? Are you tired of your action heroes? Looking like they get they they might get in a fight with Pee Wee Herman and they they might they may get their ass kicked, but they're the leads of the movies. Are you tired of that? Well, hey, Last Man Down's got you covered, man. <laughs> Beef, buff, burly badasses, tons of grease. <laughs> you got to have the grease now. You have you got to have the grease. Huge body count, funny one liners. Uh, I really enjoyed this. It's one of my favorite uh, action flicks of the year. Had a lot of fun. Uh, with last man down so yeah gotta throw that in there and um uh the director bao tran i really had a lot of fun uh with the paper tigers it, it, it this movie for me felt like a warm hug you know because we don't really get a lot of kung fu comedies uh anymore especially over here we don't in the states and uh he really had to he he got opposed I don't know if you saw our interview, Rick. Uh, oh yeah, it was oh, a yeah. you, that was a the story of just all the hassle just to get this movie made and how the the, the studios wanted Nicolas Cage yeah. or somebody else. They didn't, you know. It was just like okay, you know, just ridiculousness. And he really he tried so hard to get his little independent film uh, out there, and it, it was a success. So yeah. shout out to Baltran. Yep. There was some hilarious moments in the movie. Some fun martial arts for sure. All right, next up, uh, the harder they fall. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. For I'm more used to uh, like you know, what's my time in the West, spaghetti westerns, outlaw Josie Wales, this, and this, this year's old. Spaghetti. This was a soul food western. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. You, you could see you could see all the spaghetti western influences in yes. virtually every scene. Yeah, yes, and the soundtrack too. Sometimes yeah. it's the score, yeah. Uh, but yeah, this highly stylized western I had a lot of fun with. Fun Great. characters, uh, just a, a really cool badass 
uh, girl on girl fight. They were to kick. They, they, their fight was the best fight in the movie. <laughs> yeah, but it pissed me off. It pissed oh. the end. Pissed me off. Oh, That's, just let me give you a little taste of sure. what you're okay. going to get when I when I go. Okay, okay, See, okay. I watch it from my my anger because th- none of these movies that you've mentioned are on my list. None. Yeah, of them. I, I I assume. Yeah, yeah. But I enjoyed all of them. But just I didn't think they were elevated. The thing gotcha. that took the harder they fall on my list was that at the end of the fight, they stopped fighting the way they had been fighting, and she let, uh, spoiler alert, let the yeah. villain live. Didn't even check the status of the villain. That's a good point. They did that for a cinematic reason so they could have that fade out, and I went, right. ah, Sequel bait. Yeah. me off. Yeah, no, no, that's a good That's a good point. That's actually yeah. a good point. That's so that's a, awesome. Especially when you're, but it was, when you're it trying to kill movie. the person. It's like, why would you let the person go, go after you tried to kill the person? <laughs> Yeah, you hit no, them, they down, and you walk away. It's oh, like, oh, right. The... I know. <laughs> no, that's a good point. But yeah, I yeah. enjoyed it. I enjoyed uh, the hard. It's a great movie. Sure. I love. Uh, it. Next it's up a... is a uh, uh, Scott Atkins one shot. Uh, very thin on plot, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You can follow the plot. That's all that matters. But man, this is one of those rewatch movies. Like every time you watch it, you're gonna you're gonna learn something new. In terms of man, how did they pull that shot off? There's the whole entire movie is is one shot, you know, just like the title. <laughs> and what we'll, you know, film the best to their ability in one take, and uh just an action-packed knife fighting, explosions, ground fighting, uh, you know, uh, tactical shooting sequences. Like, how in the hell did they pull this off? So yeah, really enjoyed uh Pat, where where did you see it? Uh I rented it on Amazon Prime. Oh, okay. Well, that's if I haven't been able to find it yet. I'll find it. I'll get it. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. I'm looking forward to it. I've heard great things about it. Yeah, it was very, very right. well done. Just now, I heard great things about it. <laughs> Copy that. All right. Next up is uh, Kate. I'm sorry, Rick. I enjoyed Don't apologize. Kate. Don't apologize. Okay, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Is there something about it? it well, I was concerned at first with the girl. I was like, oh, God, because you guys know Samurai Guy. <laughs> with, with annoying little kids sometimes that br- that will break the movie um but uh it, it 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 lessened her annoyance lessened as the movie went along but yeah i mean uh, elizabeth uh really trained hard for the film yep. and uh there's some really well done action sequences in here and some there's there you may say this style over substance i'm perfectly fine with that I don't mind it. It's violent well, and it's fun. So yeah, considering the plot line, it had to be yeah. style over substance because right. this is one, as you know, of the assassination movies this year. What I call <laughs> the genre is assassination, where right. virtually everybody in the world is a killer. Right. And this is one of I think four or five this year, which is female-driven assassination movies. And I did and a poll not- just for you. Yeah, go ahead. I did a poll just for you. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna. I'm gonna post it right now. So I said, out of the four female-driven <laughs> assassin I have movies, five. I have five. Yeah. Oh, we had five. Oh, I missed one. Five. Okay. Well, I couldn't do yeah. five for the poll anyway. But yeah. here, uh, just as for you, Rick, I'm sure you're gonna be very happy about this. But uh, Black Widow. Uh, one, hold on. Let me move the banner. Oh, then here. that's six with Black Widow. That's six now. Okay. Oh, okay. Six so movies. Black Widow won the the voting poll. I asked everybody who, what was your favorite uh, assa- female assassin flick of the year. No and question. Black Widow won there. Um, but what was the other two? I have. There's a movie. There's a little movie which is surprisingly good and one of my favorites. It's called Ava. A V A. It's oh. the reason that movies like Gunpowder Milkshake and uh, Protege do not have their original titles because all these movies that were coming out all had a a female first name as their title. Right, because right. Because Protégé right. was originally called Anna. But then oh. Ava came out. Okay. Ava is surprisingly good, and it's surprisingly realistic in its fights and its approach. Okay. And so look at that. I believe that's, I believe it's on Netflix or it's on Amazon Prime, but it's very good. Protégé, but also Jolt. Right. Oh. oh. Yeah, yeah okay. Jolt. And I'm surprised... <laughs> That you didn't mention gunpowder milkshake. What on the on the poll or on is, the my favorite? Is that on the poll? Gunpowder. It's on, it's on there. Okay, I got, so I got Papa, Kate, Protege, Protege, Jolt, Kate, Gunpowder Milkshake, Black Widow, all female driven. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, uh, all female driven 
assassination movies. Okay, okay. And I like I like them all. I didn't right. love any of them. Right. But Baba right. was surprising because all the rest of them did the badass stuff. Mm. They, Ava, they tried to, because of the stars, they tried to make it more realistic and more recognizable human behavior. Mm. And also the fights. The fights were realistic. The fights weren't exaggerated. Right, right. So it's right. worth taking a, while, a look if you, can, if you can find it. But anyway, okay. go back okay. to your list. Don't mind All me. right. Copy that. All right. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to talk about Jolt a little later. But yeah, all right. Next up, <laughs> next up, next up is a movie I didn't even know came out this year. I was literally browsing Netflix, and this was literally the last minute before I even did our list uh, over the weekend. I watched this, and it's an action flick from Spain. Oh yeah, Extreme. Yeah, this is cool. Man, this you guys, you guys got to watch this on Netflix right now. Watch Extreme. You got gunfights, sword fights. Uh, just brutal martial arts. Like I've, I don't think I've ever seen a movie. Rick, you might have to help me out here, but yeah. <laughs> they're fighting in the car, and yep. he takes off the top of the car seat off, and and stabs people in the neck with. It. Yep. Yep. I don't think I've ever seen that. Uh, but yeah, Extreme was really satisfying. That that's this amazing. Now this really... is that what? Where's that from? Because this is the first action movie Spain. from this country, Spain. No way, really. One of the first, and it's also driven by that guy in the middle with the sword. He's he was a longtime stuntman, and there was another French film that was similar, where a stuntman drove the film, and he oh. this was his this was his labor of love. But he oh. stars in it, he choreographed it, and it's and as you found out, it's a it's a sweet little movie. Yeah, I just it, it, it was a, a great, great surprise. Like at the last minute, I was like, "What's extreme?" <laughs> and I was like, "Well, that's going on the list." It's yeah, good. If you guys haven't seen Extreme, check it out. It's badass, and uh, of course, oh, yeah. You know, and also, after you do that, spoilers, also but yeah, but... go to the Lost Bullet. That's the mm. French. One. Another the stuntman is the lead. Okay. And again, a sweet little movie, all done realistic. No, they didn't have the money for special effects. The same thing with Extreme. Okay. Great double feature, Extreme and The Lost Bullet. All right, cool. I'm putting that in the queue for sure. For sure. One from Spain, one from France. Okay. The Lost Bullet. Sounds cool. Well, I got to check that out for sure. Uh, of course, another little surprise this year. I had a lot of fun with Shang-Chi. I didn't, I didn't think I was going to like it as much. Cause I wasn't really blown away by the uh, trailer. I was just like, okay, well let's see what this might be fun. Right. Remember what Marvel does with its trailer. <laughs> doesn't want you to want you to be delighted in the theater. That doesn't want you to be delighted during the trailer. Right, 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 right. But Oh, I just, it was the fight scenes were legit. Uh, I love the way they were filmed and edited. I was like, thank God there's hope. There's Andy hope. Chang and Brad Allen, Andy Chang and Brad yeah. Allen. Yeah. Yeah. The late uh, Brad yeah, the late uh, rest in peace. But uh, yeah, I enjoy. I enjoy. Yeah, uh, this one I enjoyed as well. Uh, Cop shop. Cop shop's uh, cool little film. Yeah, another came out of nowhere. Um, I was like, I, I I gotta check this out. Yeah, small scale little action thriller, but it it was just so it was just a lot of fun. It was funny. There was some dark comedy in it, uh, and it was just it were assault on precinct one. Yeah, there you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one, yeah. And it reminded you of why Gerard Butler was great. You know, oh, he's when you, awesome. When you give him the right role and let him go to town, he's just like that. There, he's a superstar. Boom, there you go. All his there roles are the right roles. He just takes uh, it, and walks with it. That I movie, did not, as you know, there wasn't a lot of action in that movie, but it was buoyed by all these strong performances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, uh, Frank Grillo, he, it looks like he had a good year, huh? <laughs> I don't know what his problem with that movie was. He went on record saying that there was another cut of this movie where he came out better. And I'm not sure how that was possible. Cause I thought, cop shop? Was, yeah. Oh, he had a problem with cop shop. That's weird. Cause he was, he was good in it. That's bizarre. Yeah. It was great. I thought, hmm. uh, but speaking of Frank Grillo really enjoyed, uh, oh. boss level. I yep. mean, uh, and I said uh, over the weekend that this, this, to me, this was the most underrated <laughs> action movie of the year. Oh, it's great. It's on it Hulu. Just, it's great. Yeah, 
it just came out of nowhere and like nobody talked about it and just disappeared. And I was just like, That's dude, this... number nine. You finally have a you finally have a title on my hey, hey. G2. Yeah, boss <laughs> level, Joe Can Carnahan. Yeah. Uh, uh just um, it's the groundhog day of action movies. Yeah. Yeah. So lots and lots and lots of great action. Yeah. And all different types of action, mm -hmm. fists, guns, and swords. Just a great movie. Yeah, and we get a little another little Michelle Yeoh bonus. Yeah, <laughs> Michelle yeah, Yeoh's all yeah. over the place because she's yeah. awesome. All right, yeah, Boss Love was great. I just I really enjoyed that a lot. Me too. Uh, the movie I said over the weekend that could have easily been the rise of Skywalker of the franchise, uh, but uh, salvaged what 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 it could to kind of save the franchise as best as it could. Uh, I'll have Rick pronounce the title. No. Time to die. <laughs> so, and I'll give you a little hint. I love this movie because it's on both my best and worst list. Oh, brilliant. I doubled I double teamed it. Oh, that's brilliant. That's funny. That's funny. No, that's a good call. Good call. But uh there's only one yeah. scene in the whole movie that's on the best list. The rest of the movie's on the worst list. <laughs> Copy that. I can't wait to hear it. Uh but yeah, just it was a fun man. It was a little homage, little a bunch of Easter eggs to the fans and action oh, was well done. And it's, yeah, it was the best they could have done. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it oh, is. Because okay. did Casino Royale, so they could have done better. It's true. This is that the is best true. they could have done with Daniel Craig in control. Oh, good point. Good point. Yeah. Uh, next up, we got nobody, nobody. Yep. Bob Odenkirk, man. Man, I never, I, again, I, I the guy from Better Call Saul. That's right. Uh, never, never in a million years, I thought he would be kick ass and taking names the way he did in this film. And uh, just Christopher Lloyd was hilarious. Like it's just a fun flick. I want to see. I want to see. Yeah, it. yeah. You think they and would? Also, remember, this should be on the poster now. It's the movie that gave Bob Odenkirk, Odenkirk a heart attack. Is is that what they're saying? No, that's what happened. Oh, okay. Okay. Because I know he, he I know he all he, the action himself. He did all right. the action himself. Right, and right. And then he went back to the next season of Better Call Saul and had a heart right. attack. Oh wow. Okay. Yes. Be careful, people. Use a yeah. stunt. Use a stunt person. Yeah. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Except great unless movie. you're Tom Cruise, then you know you Just can't a do great it. Movie. Little too John Wickish for me, but it's still on my list. Yeah, it's still fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, nobody's there. Uh, this I enjoyed a lot. Uh, fun movie, fun action. Uh, the Suicide Squad, I enjoyed it. Great popcorn fun. Had that violence that Samurai Guy craves because it's Samurai <laughs> Guy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I had a good time with it, definitely. And uh, it was fun having Richard Norton on here talking about uh, what him and his team did behind the scenes with the fight scenes and stuff like that. It was always great. Uh, having the legend on here. Oh, uh, we got to get him back on, get him back on here in the future for sure. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah. The suicide squad, definitely a lot of fun. And, and, uh, in my opinion, better than the, the other version. Do oh, you sure. ever, do you ever think we will ever get a David Ayer cut Rick? I hope we, I hope, I, th I hope so. Me but too. It all depends on how Warner brothers feels about him because they, they love Zach. So they let Zach, you know, they keep on letting Zach, come back they keep on rebirthing him right. every time he squanders his welcome he they give it back to him air i'm afraid is a writer so they, they he may have a harder slog mm. because the producers at warner brothers are famous for being eating their own i mean right. again ask martin campbell the director right. of Casino royale who also did green lantern and i don't the protege yeah yeah well, not just the protege, but you know the way they threw Martin under the bus after the failure of the Green Lantern. That's the yeah. kind of thing Warner's does, and also yeah. throwing Zack under the bus after Man of Steel and Batman v Superman. Right. But then keep on giving him another chance. But I hope that we do get a. Cut. Well, I hope we have a cut because at least Warner's knows that they can make money off of it. Yeah. But the only reason they wouldn't do it if is if they want to screw David Ayer. Gotcha. If they have a, if they're angry at David Ayer for, for whatever reason, they might be, because <laughs> you know I wouldn't be surprised. They would be. They would yeah. be. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure that would probably by default has to be better than the, 
the version we got from the original. Oh, that's another reason they, they may not want it because they mm. may it may be so superior to what they did to the movie. Right. That it embarrassed them, so they may not allow. Well, it. I can ask you now since you brought up Zack Snyder, are you are you excited now? Because it, from what I'm hearing, Flashpoint's going to destroy the Snyder verse, and and that's it. We're starting brand new. So, are you happy about this? No, I mean I love great <laughs> movies. I'm happy with great movies, no matter what they are. Okay. I love, I like watching, you know, we'll get to Snyder on my list. Uh -huh. but, um, I love watching him just reveling in his newfound power and his revival. And I mean, he makes, he makes movies that I get to watch like this, <laughs> you know, because I know yeah. what's happening here. It's all him. It's a hundred percent him. Right. Right. And I, <laughs> And I'm glad it's on. I'm glad it's on streaming, so I don't have to go to the theater and be trapped there. Right, wow. that's true. He just, he just <laughs> turns the screw. So yeah. I'm not, yeah. So you're More so power. you're so you're like whatever happens, you just want good movies, basically. That's it. I've gotten okay. to an age now where every movie may be my last, so I just want it to be a great one. Thanks, so. all. Sounds all good I'm to me. Good. Sounds good to me. Uh, speaking of, uh, next up, uh, is, is what I've been told several times, uh, is the most boring, uh, action movie, uh, of the year. Really? And I'm just like, uh, real, the most boring, uh, Are you on your worst flick. list now? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> well, this is on your best, right? This is on my best, but I just yeah. wanted to, I just wanted to tell you that, that, uh, boring. apparently... I've been hearing this a lot, and this is my response to that. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, er movies are subjective. You don't have to like Raging Fire. But the, but boring. I'm just like, wow, that's very well, interesting. <laughs> given the situation that Hong Kong's in now and Hong Kong cinemas in now, yeah, we have to cherish every one we get because it may be the last. That's right. That's and right. this is Donnie, and Donnie's the last kung fu choreographer standing. Yeah. And yeah. Hey, fast forward through the boring parts. Right. Get to the action scenes, and you will be. Amply rewarded. Yeah, me and Kyle, we 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 both watched it and it scratched the itch for us. We both really enjoyed it. All we wanted was a as a badass, entertaining cop thriller with that little bit of the '90s flavor. That's all we want, and that's what we got. <laughs> like, so and that's also, like, yeah, I'm not going to argue with your badass epithet right. in this case because this is a badass movie. Yeah, yeah, no question. Awesome. But yeah, Rage Raging Fire had to go on there. Yeah. And next up, of course, um, did you recommend this to me, Rick? I, I believe I did. did. I did. I think you did. No, this next one. I think you did. Yeah, um... I, I think I know what you're saying. Okay. Okay. I'm guessing what it is. The Swordsman. Yeah. That's the one I, that's one of the two I recommended to you. Okay. 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 Yeah. Man, this was so good. Awesome. Really enjoyed this one. I mean, yeah. it just... Ah, again, it, it, it makes me take a breath of like, yay. <laughs> Great martial arts uh, and, and, and dramas and thrillers, period piece, if you will, still exist. Yep. It's so true, well done. It's not a true story, but it takes place in a true era of Korea. And what's amazing about it, among other things, is not only is it choreographed by my favorite uh, martial uh, action choreographer at the moment, who is multiply times on my list, including one of my worst. Yeah. Um, Kenji, uh, yeah. Yeah, Kenji Tanagaki. Mm -hmm. But it it has Korean swordsmanship, Japanese swordsmanship, and Chinese swordsmanship, all in the same. And if you know those, and it's accurate, they're all accurate. So if you can learn about, and it takes place in a period of history in Korea where the Chinese and the uh, Japanese were vying for control of Korea. To, and it's also an homage to the Zawichi movie. Yes. yes it's just an amazing look. movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of the best. I had to put that on the on my list for sure. And I'll just lump these next two in here <laughs> since they came out the same year. Uh, but yeah, uh, again, thanks to Rick's uh uh Rick Rick knew 
before I even ranted about a, a, a certain movie, you guys know exactly what movie I'm talking about. Uh, Rick, Rick knew I was down in the dumps. <laughs> Rick, Rick was like, come here, let uncle Rick pat you come on the back. Come here, buddy. Go watch the first action sequence in Ronnie Kenshin, the beginning, and that will perk you up and make you happy. <laughs> and I was like, oh, thank God. I was like this. I was like, how did they do that? This is amazing. It, yeah. I mean, for those who have not seen, this is the prequel to all four films. Uh, and the beginning of the movie, he is tied up. And he has, was it a, was it, what was it a, was it a Tonto in his mouth or what? Oh, I believe it was a full Katana. <laughs> oh my God. He had a Sword full in his, yeah. in his mouth. In his mouth. And he just, just destroys a room. Kills everybody. People. It's amazing. So it is amazing. Beautiful. So beautiful. Yeah. 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 And uh, it was uh, such a beautiful movie too. Yep. Cinematography was great. Uh, but my number one uh, is still my number one of the of the year from the Mine Saturdays too. list. Mine too. Yeah, it's. I mean, come on, Roni Kenshin, the final, the fourth film in the franchise. Actually, uh, I like some it. of the best, some of the best sword fights, and just it's it's phenomenal. <laughs> Sorry, I had to play the trailer one more time. <laughs> of and by the way, I lied. That's not my number one. That's my number three. But okay. I put I put beginning and final together. Okay. Okay. Nice, nice. Basically the same time. So those were all both number three. That's it for Samurai Guys Best of Action list. Let's hear uh what Kung Fu Santa's got on his uh well again. I want to give you the disclaimer. The disclaimer okay. is I watch movies differently than I used to. Okay. Now that I've taken, you know, 40 years of martial arts and 20 years of Kung Fu, I'm again, like, uh, you know, I'm no longer like that Chinese author who wrote a book on baseball movies without knowing the rules of baseball. Now I know the rules of martial arts. And I also, being the author of the Dirty Harry uh, novels and a lot of international thrillers as a ghostwriter, I've shot every gun there is to know at least from a period of time. And also I started watching movies when, you know, when I was uh, like five years old, which was, you know, almost 50 years ago at this point. So I'm watching them differently. So please forgive me. I, I'm, I mean, you can, you can eat a McDonald's ham. If I eat a McDonald's hamburger now, I'll get sick. <laughs> no, I got you. Be honest. Everyone and loves so, your honesty. It's all good. So now when I watch action movies, I'm looking for something different than I would imagine a majority of your gotcha. people, people and you look for. So okay. that's why I'm deciding. So right, my yeah. list, number 10 best, the 10th best of the year for me, simply for the action, nothing else. Okay. And also because I want a revenge on Black Panther, on the Black Panther's action. Because Black Panther, they you know, Panther doesn't fight like a Panther. Ape guy doesn't fight like an ape. Right. So what happens in Godzilla versus Kong? We've got a character who fights like a lizard and a character who fights like an ape. They nice. fight like themselves. And the two major fight scenes in the movie, nice. you can see them. They're not yes. cut shreds like virtually everything on my worst list. So that's my number 10. <laughs> Love it. Number nine was Boss Level, okay. which is, again, a movie that deserves to be watched repeatedly because, because the guy lives the same life and has to keep changing his action. And that's the other thing I look for in an action scene, that the character learns. And the whole plot idea of Boss Level is if he's going to survive, he has to learn. Mm -hmm. He has to learn what's going on and change his approach. And he does it throughout the entire movie. You know, it's a science fiction concept. The ending's a little soft because they kind of paint themselves into a corner. Mm. But the action throughout is top notch. Yes. Just awesome stuff. And I'm going to cheat a little with my number seven because it's basically two and a half movies, but it's considered a series. And that is Hawkeye. Oh, okay. 
Hawkeye was perfect after Eternals for me. Eternals is not on my list. It's a good right. movie. It's, I believe it's going to get better when I start watching it over and over again. Right. But Hawkeye, after Eternals, which was all godlike, Hawkeye was all about a human being, about human beings. Nobody on the show had superpowers. No mm -hmm. one. They all had supra powers, and they were all falling apart because of what they had suffered. And the action changed from episode to episode. Also, the, the, uh, the subplot about the deaf, of him going deaf and fighting the deaf person who's going to have her own show, Edge. And right. also the return, spoiler Echo, over Echo, Kingpin. Right. And having the final big blowout between Kingpin and the new Hawkeye be and not be the original Hawkeye doing that fight. All the more I thought about it, the more I watched it, the just the better it got. And they brought in a Muay Thai guy for the last two episodes. Oh. And that, that specifically for the fight with um with Kingpin. And again, there's so it's so meaty, there's so much there. It's so warm, it's so emotional. It works. And also, again, the reason that Suicide Squad is not on my list of 10 best or worst, mm -hmm. and many other Marvel and, 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 um, and Asian films are, is that it's important. I've gotten tired of movies where the character isn't human anymore. The character is a, is a cartoon character. They're robots. They're, they're digital characters because, like John Wick and others, they take so much abuse that I can no longer treat them like, I can no longer watch the movie with anything, then okay, I'll wait for this to be over. Because mm. I don't care about anybody. They're not human to me. They're just, I might as well be watching a video game. And okay. that's great because video games are very successful and more power to them. But these movies, I for a movie which supposedly has human characters, I have to care. And it's the same thing with animation too, although I don't have any animated movies on my list. So Hawkeye, I thought was excellent and I look forward to watching it more. And again, I felt great at the end of it. I was going, oh, I like, <laughs> like these people. I want to spend more time with them. <laughs> and also I want to see them fight some more because the, the fights changed from episode into episode. People were complaining about the first two episodes. And they were saying, right. I couldn't make it out in the first fight. And they oh, said, okay. because that was the first fight had a partially hearing person and a deaf person. So they choreographed the fight in that from that point of view. And you notice that on su subsequent viewings. And then in comes Black Widow's sister. And that fight is different. All the fights are different. It's just uh, the rooftop fight was good. I enjoyed yeah. that. Yeah. And all of them are good if you watch them from a different standpoint. Then I have nobody. Mm -hmm. And again, nobody was John Wickish. But it's still, it was elevated because I know Bob Odenkirk added the humor and the humanity to the script. John Wick, again, is a, a no longer existing human being, but nobody just, just was close to being it. And also he got smarter as the movie went on and he didn't, he tried not to just punch people or shoot people. He tried to use his imagination and his wit and his brain to make the fight easier for him. I mean, the, the scene where they're using explosives against each other, he had to get <laughs> smart to survive that, even though yeah. he didn't. You know, normally his 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 chest cap his chest cavity his sternum would have been in a million pieces, yeah. but I forgave it. It's all right. And then the next on my list is not no time to die. It's okay. no time to die. The Paloma scene, the Paloma cut. Ana okay. de Amis plays Paloma, a CIA trainee stationed <laughs> in Cuba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She has one scene, which if I had to choose one scene from the whole year, that would be it. <laughs> she was amazing. Killed it. Killed she, it. it. She killed everybody. She didn't just kill it. <laughs> she killed everybody around her. And she did it <clears throat> in a gown that was slid down to her navel and slid up to her hip. Amazing filmmaking. Amazing choreography. On On my podcast, I did not on the best and worst, but on when I was reviewing the movie the first time on my podcast, which was last month or whatever, I gave a big shout out to her four stunt people. She had four stunt pe stunt women wow. to, to double her. Just, I mean, 
that movie, mm. that scene just took my breath away. And the rest of the movie was like, what? go back to her. Go back <laughs> I to know. her. Why do I have to watch this guy with his head up his butt? Let me get back to her. So that was just awesome. The next on my list, Raging Fire. And again, it's because I it's bowed boring. to him. He's the last guy standing at this point. And he, and again, fat, the action sequences and specifically the hand-to-hand -hand stuff. I mean, yeah. he, he choreographs the ground fighting now. He does his mixed martial arts to a yeah. very high level. And so, yeah, I have to worship it because, again, it may not, it may not be around much. That kind of film may not be around much longer. Right. Although Americans are taking up, but Asian-driven Chinese choreography, yeah, very difficult at this point to find. Then, Rorori Kenshin, the beginning and the final, both of which is my number. Uh, actually, that's my number three. The number four is Sang Chi. Nice. All right. Sang Chi is basically the Marvel version of Kung Fu Hustle because they do the same thing in the movie that Kung Fu Hustle did, except they go one step slightly further and they do it from a Western point of view. In Kung Fu Hustle, Stephen Chow paid homage to the entire history of Kung Fu cinema and Wushu cinema and Wuxia cinema. And, that's, and so it was all about the movies. In Shang-Chi, that's why Sang Chi has a Kung Fu Hustle poster up in his apartment, mm -hmm. in his garage. Is they they do they do that as well, but then they go one step further and they move it into Kung Fu Panda Three territory, which is this is the, only the second movie ever made where they tell you this is not a good idea. This is a much better idea. Don't do this. Do this. Don't make a fist. This will hurt you. Do this, you'll be able to. And they also showed for one of the first times ever in an American film how to do Tai Chi properly, how to do it as a good ass or great ass as opposed <laughs> to badass. Your idea is not to be stronger and badder and meaner and tougher. Your idea is to be smarter and more effective and driven by Chi, your inner energy. And as La Cal Young, the maker of 36 Chamber, always said, turning using soft to make hard you know because again I, you can do astonishing things and they do that in sang chi and they also bring in wuxia they bring in wushu they bring in kung fu and also they pay homage to jackie chan to mm -hmm. uh, chow yun fat to jet Li. they pay homage to sang uh stephen chow and so i recognize where each of the fights the fight on the bus is just police story one and two yeah Yep, <laughs> and, and stuff from and a trick that Brad Allen did with Jackie in in a movie called Gorgeous, where where Brad Allen was on screen. So he uses all the same techniques. So Sang Chi is great. Then we get Rory Kenshin, the double header, the double feature, the you know, <gasps> oh my gosh, <laughs> just incredible in the mouth. I mean, come on. And then number two is Swordsman. Okay. Swordsman was going to be my number one because it was so much heart and so much great. But the, my number one, and you don't even have it on your list, and I'm, I'm surprised by this. Okay. It's my favorite movie of the year without question. It's the best kung fu movie of the year. It is Spider-Man No Way Home. Ah. Spider-Man No Way Home. It's amazing with Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange is the kung fu master in the <laughs> Marvel Cinematic Universe. In the first <laughs> Doctor Strange movie, he does the heck second highest form of Kung Fu. Second highest form of Kung Fu is when if, if another person insists on trying to hurt themselves by trying to hurt you, you as a Kung Fu student will help them. And that's exactly what Doctor Strange does in the first Doctor Strange movie. Not only does he spend all his time throughout the movie watching people doing mystical martial arts and saying, and I quote, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way. Right. And at the end, he does the better way. He And the line, again, just like Poe in the first Kung Fu Panda, when Poe says, no, I figured it out, you can see all the, the Kung Fu masters in the audience going, yay, yay, that's exactly right. That's what we always say. No, I figured it out. And But in Doctor Strange, what he says to the villain is, I got you what you wanted. 
you won't like it. Yeah. That's 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 exactly what we were saying before, which is give them what they want. You know, yeah. if you they insist on trying to hurt themselves by trying to hurt you, you'll help. And that's what Dr. Strange did. He helped. You won't like it, but I helped. I gave you what you wanted. That was in the first movie. In this movie, he does. He doesn't do it. That's the most interesting thing. Spider-Man does it. Right. Number one rule <clears throat> of Fu is not to fight. And the subtitle of not to fight, number one slash, don't fight. Underneath that, how do you fight without fighting? You make your enemy your friend. That's how you do it. Hmm. You make friends. One right. time, a, a, a Kung Fu student asked his teacher, how do I protect myself from an attack from the back? And he said, and, they, and the students tried to figure it out. And they couldn't find out a foolproof way to prevent an attack from the back. They used reflection. They used shadows. Still wasn't <clears> foolproof. <throat> and the teacher says, you make such good friends that they'll never let you be attacked from the back. It's all about making friends. Also in Kung Fu, if you have an enemy, at least half your fault. At least half your fault. <laughs> <laughs> in Spider-Man No Way Home, Spider-Man fights. The only fight he really does, besides trying to take revenge for the death of a loved one and being talked out of it to make friends, was he fought Doctor Strange because Doctor Strange wanted to, to doom these characters to certain right. death. And Spider-Man said, no, I'm going to make my enemies my friends. And I went... <laughs> and again, it's a movie like Sang Chi, where they show all different kinds of martial arts and kung fu. And also, again, so mad at the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences for not honoring honoring Marvel's incredible achievement with uh, Avengers Endgame, culminating with Avengers Endgame. And in this one, again, they did the same thing. If you see this in a movie theater, just like Avengers Endgame, it teaches you why the movie theater is better than watching it at home. So why the Academy doesn't embrace that and embrace Marvel for teaching whole new younger generations the beauty of going to a movie theater and sitting with a bunch of other people and they all laugh, cry, and cheer yeah. at the same time. Yeah. yeah, You can't do that at home. And the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences, oh, Marvel sucks, superhero movies suck. You assholes, you idiots. They're doing what you want to do and you're ignoring it. Yeah. And Spider-Man No Way Home, how did I feel? As much as I loved Rory Kenshin, as much as I loved the swordsman, mm -hmm. I didn't feel the way I felt when they ended, the way I felt after Spider-Man No Way Home. I was it's like... Phenomenal. Oh, it's phenomenal. I don't oh, feel too bad. I at least had it on my uh, number two best of the year list. So. Oh, you did? I thought you went through all your best. <laughs> no, no. The, my best, I had a best and worst of the year. It was like a mixture. Oh, for you. Yeah, but not action. Yeah. This yeah. is still the best action movie of the year. Yeah. yeah. Action. I got it over there. I'm good. It's just but, so uh, but uh, yeah, it's great. Great picks. Wonderful picks, of course. Are you worse now? Yeah, let's go ahead and do worse. <laughs> Now, uh, my 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 badass movie dojo uh, audience may wonder why some of the movies they know I hated are not on here, and that's because, and in, in the action list, I, I don't even consider them action because I absolutely hated Red Notice. I destroyed it on Saturday, ah! and I don't even consider that's not even worthy to go on the worst action movies list. So. If you don't see Shadow in the Cloud here, that's why. <laughs> but I yeah, let's it, go ahead. And... I took Red Absolutely. Notice off my list. I also took off SAS Red Notice off my oh, list. You know what's really funny about that? What? I saw that movie. I don't even remember it. I don't remember anything about that movie. <laughs> that's how you know. That's how you know it's not good. Oh, my goodness. All right. Let's get into Samurai, guys. I'll go, I'll go first here. Oh, shoot. We got Eric here in the house. He was disappointed with Protégé. Yeah. Uh, Eric, the only good thing about Protégé were the scenes with Michael Keaton. Yeah. yeah. It was just like Paloma yeah. in No Time to Die. The fight scene Michael Keaton has yeah. with Matthew is the best thing in the yeah. movie. Yeah. I could, you know, it's like with the, with the Protégé, I was like entertained with, mildly entertained with him in the movie, but that ending was so stupid. 
that whole finale. That whole finale, I was like, "Well, you lost me there." All right, <laughs> this is like, "Oh, you you screwed it up." All right, first up. Now you know me, Rick. I give everything a chance. You know, small, low budget, no budget, micro budget movies, big budget movies. I'll give them both a shot because as long last, as they're entertaining. Last man down. Last man down. <laughs> there you go. As long, as long as they're entertaining, that's all I care about, right? So I gave this movie a shot. Uh, the trailer looked interesting. Every last one of them. Now, doesn't this sound like a, a movie samurai guy would love? Every last one of them will die. You know, like this is right up Samurai Guy's alley here. You got Richard Dreyfus being, you know, he's in this movie wishing he was back, you know, in Jaws. Uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah i gave this a shot and i was on board i was on board and then you know i was like okay it, it's inspired it's either inspired by first blood or they're homaging first blood I, I i couldn't figure it out but it was definitely had a first, blood first vibe. Blood? it was a it was a first blood vibe to me and so i was just kind of like all right fine i don't that's fine I'll, I'll watch it i don't mind it i love first blood let's see if they can still entertain me in that way and as soon as it got started, you know, he's looking for his daughter. You know, his daughter went into town, disappeared. He comes across the local authorities. They torture him, just like First Blood. <laughs> he breaks away, just like First Blood. And uh, the, the hunt begins. But the difference between this and First Blood, yes, this has a bigger body count than First Blood. But the difference is, as soon as the hunt and the chase begins, that's what's, what's, that's what's exciting about First Blood. As soon as the hunt and chase begins, the movie decides to, no, the action's getting good here. He's taking out dudes here and there. And I'm like, all on board. Uh, it's violent. I'm all on board. And then the movie's like, no, hold on. We're going to just fuck all the excitement. And we're going to just, hey, let's do the whole past backstory on how the father got with the daughter. And there's and they have relationship issues. And she's a druggie. And then you know, let's go visit Michael Madsen in the garage. He used to be a druggie. And he's trying to get her off of drugs. It completely derailed the movie all this back and forth uh it ran out of money for the action scenes they ran out maybe of money. it could oh, yeah, it, that's, the only right. that's the only excuse yeah and so i'm like praying to god at least the finale's badass and does he kill every last one of them no you know who, <laughs> he you almost know does them, you know who the them refers to who the audience <laughs> But yeah, I was disappointed. I was just like, come on, man. Even the finale action wasn't that good. And I, I don't have an issue with the lead guy. I'm sure he's great. It's just, you lost me, man. I was on board and you just completely, uh, completely lost me. Uh, and, and it didn't make any sense. They bring in Richard Dreyfus as the bootleg Colonel Troutman character. They bring him in and it didn't make any sense. He's like, he's got his whole team to help stop bootleg John Rambo. And none of the team are listening to him. He's like, stop shooting at him. He says that constantly. And they just shoot that bootleg John Rambo. I'm like, why are you here? Fake diet Colonel Troutman? Like, why are you here? So it's you're just giving it, You're giving it way too much time. Okay. Right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's move on. Yeah, that sucked. Uh, next up, just recently watched this. Uh, Jolt. Uh, Jolt is uh, has to go on here. And the reason why I put Jolt on here is because, believe it or not, I was enjoying Jolt. The first, like, 20, 30 minutes, I was laughing my ass off. I was like, this is hilarious. The character having this issue, and it's like, I think we all, Rick, I think we all wish we had a little uh, <laughs> a little buzzer to shock <laughs> us, <laughs> you know, to keep us in place. I wish we kind of had that before we would kill somebody for being an asshole. But it doesn't work for me. I know. <laughs> I just keep going. He just keeps keep going. Uh, but yeah, I was on board, man. I was laughing. I was like, this is hilarious. I got to show my wife this. Like, this is really funny. And then when it got to the action, it was so just generic, bland, boring. Like, I was just like, and, and this is one of those movies where the, you can tell the soundtrack's trying to save it. The soundtrack's very loud and fast, trying to keep, make sure the audience doesn't go to sleep. But when, you, when you're watching stuff on screen, the, the car chase is slow. Like she's throwing babies at one of the cops. 
Because <laughs> the cops got the gun on her. She's throwing babies at it. She's catching the I baby. Thought, I didn't mind that scene. I thought that scene was, you know, like hard boiled. I thought that was cute. <laughs> I guess. I guess. But I was I was running out of patience. And and I, when I when I saw the trailer react when I did the trailer reaction for the movie way back, I noticed there was a fight scene in the trailer where she's fighting multiple guys and something yeah. didn't look right. And I called it in the trailer and I was correct. We finally get a martial arts hand to hand fight scene, like of you know, like supposed to be a big deal in the finale. And you can tell that it was just the stunt double the entire fight. Not once in the fight did they ever show the front or the side of the of the female's face. No. So was Kate sick that day? Like no, what she, happened? She didn't want to be damaged. And again, they didn't have a lot of money for this movie. It's basically all on one big set. But it was so bad. I was just like, and then the the, the the camera work for that fight sucked. So I was like losing patience. I was like so done. And then at the very end, poor Susan Sarandon. You, why you gotta why you gotta torture Susan Sarandon in this horrible nest? So they bring her in at the very end of the movie for some sequel bait. So fuck off, Jolt. Uh, Jolt can go fuck itself. All right, there next you. up, Rick. I'm I'm curious what you might think about this movie or what or. or Okay, here, let me get into it. All right, so next up, Salat Warriors, uh, Deed of Death. Now, can you watch this? Is some of the action okay? Yeah, it's all right. The only, ahead, again, the only good scene is the woman. The woman like beating the, the, the whole movie. everybody who comes into her house. Yeah. I said, the movie should have been about her. Yes. That scene is awesome. That's her Paloma scene. The rest of it was like no time to die. It was yeah. like, you know, didn't work. Yeah, it's like some of the fighting's fine, but it was just like, why did, why, why? So the one brother goes to rescue the asshole brother that caused all this mess. Why didn't she go with him? That That's been cool. Because again, I was amazed they gave her that one scene at the beginning where she kicked everybody's ass. Yeah. And, but, you know, it's, it's a, again, paternal. They're doing their, they're feeding the audience what they think the audience wants. But man, a movie about her would have been much better. That it would have, because I hated this guy. I hated this character so bad. I was like, dude, stop fucking posing. <laughs> like, stop posing. Every time he did like four martial arts moves, he posed every single time. I'm like, no movie. This this guy, he's an asshole. He caused all these problems for his family. We we're not supposed to like this guy. Stop forcing us to like unlikable characters. Yeah, it's so a story I, of redemption. It's a story of redemption. <laughs> <laughs> now you're giving it too much credit, Rick. All right. No, so I'm again, not saying it is. I'm I'm quoting the producer. Oh God. Because okay. producers always project themselves onto oh. their characters. Yeah, but I was frustrated. I was really frustrated. Yes, and uh, and the, the family was frustrating me too because they're like, look, your brother owes us money. Where's the money? Right. And then even the family's like, well, what if he does, what if our brother doesn't want to give you the money? What are you gonna do about it? I'm like, look, don't make us root for the villains. <laughs> like, you know, this, so send the sister over to kick their ass. Yeah, that that's yeah. you're correct. That should have been the movie. So let's keep it going with very unlikable characters. Yeah. Uh, outside the wire. Oh my god, I ranted about this on Saturday. I'm like, dude. It doesn't matter how good your action sequences are, special effects. It doesn't matter if the lead in your movie is fucking atrocious and he's un entitled, cocky, arrogant, does not give two shits about accidentally, accidentally killing people or accidentally sending innocent people to their death. This is, how we're, this is who we're supposed to root for. And the movie sets up this character as if he's the savior of, of mankind. Get the fuck out of here outside the wire. All right, next up. Y'all know it's got to go on here. Here we go. All right. Kujaku Resurrections. Kujaku Resurrections uh, needs to go on. <laughs> Rick, you look confused. I don't even know that movie. I've never even heard of that. <laughs> that's Matrix, Rick. Oh, that. Oh, that's what you said. Oh, okay. Oh, that, <laughs> that movie, I know. That's on my list, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Matrix Resurrections. No, I have. I'm so glad I have you here, Rick. Yeah. I've already ranted enough of while while you guys you guys know I don't like the Matrix. You know, Resurrections. You know, you guys know I ranted too much about it already. But I, I have to tell Rick this because this is a new thing that's going around now. People are saying that Matrix Resurrections is actually genius. Yep. People don't think it's genius. It's actually genius because the movie 
shits on uh, uh, the movie studio and how they how they work behind the scenes at the same time, you know, making fun of them, but also making fun of the audience that wants the same thing over and over again. So people are praising the story. My issue more than the story with this movie was the action was so nothing. It was nothing. It was worse than nothing. It was worse yeah. Than nothing. yeah, worse than nothing. And I'm like, look, you, you, I've lost. I don't care about how good your story is and how, you know, meta it is. I don't give a shit. You lost me, man. When you got everybody fighting in the fucking dark with a little sliver of light coming through, you lost me. I well, just don't care. I say the same thing about this movie that I said about Alien 3, and actually every Alien movie since Alien 3, which uh -huh. was it's the Alien movie for people who hate Alien movies. Matrix Resurrections is the Matrix movie for people who hate Matrix movies. That's why I, other people oh. are going, oh, it's genius. Ah, okay. Yes, okay. Okay. You know, I thought Ghostbusters Afterlife did a better job mining nostalgia. Okay. This one is toxic. Gotcha. Um, Matrix Resurrections, you know, it's self-hating. It's self-loathing. Right. right. And, uh, and it's also boring. <laughs> and, the, and the action is terrible. It's, especially it's I was stunned. First one. I was stunned. But oh, then man, again, yes. I saw the sequels. I saw Matrix 2 and 3, and I didn't think those were good either. So it's the same thing I felt about, you know, Rise of Skywalker. I right. saw the prequels. So I right. didn't have a lot of hope for the... <laughs> new ones, and gotcha. I didn't have a lot of hope for this one, but gotcha. it was fun to see it from a self-loathing standpoint. Right, it was interesting. Right. It wasn't good, but it was interesting. Gotcha, gotcha. More fascinating than good, right? Exactly. Uh, I said this over the weekend. Um, just because there's a popular meme out there that everyone keeps posting and sending and sharing and laughing about doesn't necessarily mean you actually want to see it happen uh, <laughs> in your favorite franchise, uh, Fast 9. Yep. The movie that jumped the shark. The movie that even Fast and Furious fanboys are like, what the fuck is this? What not is only, this? Not only did it jump the shark, but then it had a scene about talking about how it jumped the shark. That was one of my favorite things in this movie. Whenever they did something just absurd, Right, you know, Kalman would go. What what the hell's going on here? <laughs> Why aren't we dead? <laughs> like you know, hey, Tyrese, yeah, self aware, Tyrese. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was just like I, I'm used to all these movies and the style that they have. But it's just like I don't know now, man. Like this you, is a bridge too far. This is yeah. a bridge. Too far. But what was what was what's annoying me the most is just let the Brian character go. Let Paul Walker rest in peace. Stop. Stop it. <laughs> I mean, do you buy do you buy that the character of Brian stayed home to watch the kids while his well, wife went out there to risk buy, her life? As much as I buy anything else in the movie. <laughs> I mean, I don't mind that they keep him alive and I don't mind but you know it's all you need to know about Vin Diesel is watching him now trying yeah. to supposedly get the rock back into F ten. And if you see his failed. His, his, what is it? Uh, the Rock responded already. He's like, nope. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but he's still, what, what is it? Um, passive aggressive. Yeah. You know, yeah. Vin is so passive aggressive. And this movie is just like, and the more, just like Daniel Craig and no, time to die. Yeah. It, you can see the character of the filmmaker. The more power the actors get, the more the movie reflects their personalities. Gotcha. And this gotcha. is Vin Diesel unleashed. Yeah. You know, my favorite line that he keeps saying when he answers every question was, nothing's off the table. Are you going to do this next one? Nothing's off the table. <laughs> yeah, well, I would. I think it would be a great idea if you would you would take some things off the table. <laughs> you know, that would be a good idea. Exactly. So, yeah, F9 was just like kind of an insulting. You, you know what would have been hilarious? What? If they actually did go to space and then they died. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if the car just blew up and didn't make it. Yeah, That'd but, be brilliant. By that time, it was far too. I mean, when they did that whole thing at the beginning, with with Vin and the girl in the so car amazing, yeah. going across the valley on the wire, yeah. being thrown onto the cliff, rolling over and over and over again, and they literally have a shot of them yeah. in the car. Every single window 
is black. All the glass is shattered and gone. The car is beaten to a pulp. And yeah. those two characters are sitting in the front seats, no airbags, no seatbelts, without a bruise. Yeah. And at that point, I went, this has nothing to do with reality anymore. <laughs> These people can't be killed. Yeah. Doesn't matter what happens. Superheroes now. I, Vin, I, Diesel know, has I, I, Vin Diesel has incredible Hulk strength now, just pulling down well, concrete. More than that, even the Hulk shows more pain than that. <laughs> And I, you know, what I, I often say, and I've been used to a bunch of these bad movies, when anything is possible, nothing yeah. is interesting. Hmm. I like that. It's that's true. A, that's interesting. <laughs> uh, Chase says right here, hey, Fat Summer guy, I just got done watching The Gin. I hated it. Yeah. <laughs> that was on my one, of, that was my, one of my worst of the year. Uh, the the, the non action ones. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's it's horror, but it's just terrible. And the okay. ratings for both critics and audience is really high. It's baffling. Huh. So yeah, I'll have to take a look. I like yeah. yeah, I love *Malignant*. *Malignant* almost got, because of that one fight scene. I, um, *Malignant* was almost on my list of best. So, so the fight scene. So, you, okay, because we were talking about that. That some yeah. some the fight scene they that made them love the movie, and some the fight scene broke them. Yeah. But that's that's the that's the kind of movie. I mean, I if you if you subscribe to Malignant, if you buy into Malignant, if you uh -huh. if you in James Wan, I trust. So it's kind of like I know he's doing something. He never not does something. He's uh -huh. doing something. And then when it hit and it reminded me of Basket Case and the other ones, I sort of went, right. he, 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 he's so cool. And then he kept going forward with it. Uh -huh. And of course, I love the ending where again she gets smart. She just, I mean, in all my horror novels, I hate it when the when the girl and the horror movies, when the girl just keeps screaming, keeps screaming, and then gets slaughtered. I like it when the girl finally goes, okay, I'm done screaming. I'm gonna I'm gonna fight back, and I'm gonna fight back not like a guy, not like my attacker. I'm gonna fight uh -huh. back like a smart woman. So you and guys, you, okay. she does that. and it's so with guy, you guys hearing this, right? Huh? huh? Rick Myers. Yeah. Enjoyed what? Malignant. I love Malignant. So there you go. There I you go. It. All of you out there that I love Malignant, you can now put that on your box, it. on your CV. Yeah. <laughs> Rick Myers. Like the... Oh God. I love. Well, I'm happy. I'm happy you enjoyed it, Rick. I did. All right, let's keep going. Yes. Uh, Dynasty Warriors. <laughs> there we go. Gold plated poo. Gold, Gold plated, plated poo. poo. That is hilarious. Gold yeah. plated poo. That's really funny. Now, this is, uh, I wanted big, dumb fun. I was like, give me the big, dumb fun. Let's do it all the way through. Let's go. Horses riding on waves. Give me the big, dumb fun. And when me and my buddy watched this, we're like, dude, where's the big, dumb fun? Like, like yep. when there was barely any action in it. And then the movie big. just ended. And I had big. tons of drama and forced yeah. romance in the middle. Like, what happened? It wasn't fun. Well, yeah. it's Chinese. It's Chinese, which is... I mean, I, the, I, my feeling is they're actively trying to denigrate and eliminate Kung Fu. And mm -hmm. this is based on a video game. And again, you have, to, you have to walk the line of the Chinese film agency, the fi Chinese film bureau. And right. so at this point, they just, they make gold-plated poo. I mean, the costumes are great. The scenery yeah. is great. Yeah. The cast is huge. Right. That's what the Chinese do. But they can't. They no. There can't be an idea that the Chinese Film Bureau can hold on to. You can't have an idea because they'll say that's subversive. Right. So right. this is what we're left with. <sighs> well, I wanted some big dumb fun. God damn it! <laughs> and it didn't yeah, deliver on that. Big dumb not fun. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yep. Uh, next up, uh, not like it's a horrible movie. Uh, Cinematography is great. It definitely does have its moments. There's some solid action at the end. Yeah. But uh, with such a crazy premise, Prisoners yeah. of the Ghost Land was yeah. disappointing. It was disappointing. Not as disappointing as my equivalent. I have an, a, a movie that's equivalent to that one, which I'll bring up on my list. Okay. But okay. I thought of that movie that I'm going to put up on my list when I saw Prisoners of the Ghost Land. I went, yep, similar. Very similar. Okay. Was it Yakuza it Apocalypse? The in it, too. That's the same actor. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Copy that. All right. Next up, you guys know it's got to go here. Uh, 
Mortal Kombat. It's, yep. It's got to go here. Come on, yep, guys. It's got it's to go. And you know what's sad about Mortal Kombat? I know a lot it's, of things. It was the mo- <laughs> it's the most viewed movie on HBO Max. Out of all the movies that's on HBO Max, Mortal Kombat was the most watched movie the whole year. It's kind of sad. <laughs> it is and it isn't. It, tell, it tells you that a good video game movie will have an audience. But again, because it's HBO Max, because it's the studio, the studio doesn't care about its characters. It doesn't care about its fans. And yeah. they just make a piece of shit that's good enough for garbage because they know people will watch it. That's the kind of produce. That's why Marvel is so superior with <laughs> Filoni, Favreau, and uh, Feige, because right. they care about the characters, and they care about their audience, and they care about themselves. And there's they planning. The people who made Mortal Kombat were not fans of Mortal Kombat. <sighs> yeah. And they weren't, and they and they think less of the audience. Oh, you like this shit? Oh yeah, yeah. we'll give you shit. This is only good. This is good <laughs> enough for garbage. That's the attitude. <laughs> It makes I love, me mad. I love makes the beginning, mad. and I and I I kind of like the ending when we actually had Mortal Kombat. But that whole middle man, I was like, dude, this yeah, is you could, terrible. You could tell you could tell there wasn't Mortal Kombat because they didn't even do the tournament. Right, it was set up for the tournament pre yeah pre tournament with a character who was meaningless and stupid and pointless. And why oh, don't they use more characters from the video game? Preach it. Just Ooh. do the just do the fucking video game. Yeah. <laughs> Woo, preach it. All right. So just for fun, because you guys know I've completely destroyed uh Severio that you're I see you in the chat right there. You're gonna enjoy this, my friend. You're gonna enjoy this. So I have beaten this movie to a bloody pulp. Uh <laughs> I've I have ranted so much about uh this film, especially on Saturday. I was like sweating, I was like going nuts. All right. I probably look like a madman to everybody watching. I hope you guys were entertained by that. Uh, but yeah, I've beaten it to a bloody pulp. There's no, I, I'm tired. I'm sick and tired of talking about this movie. I can't wait to hear what Rick has to say. But believe it or not, I'm gonna I'm gonna flip the script. It's not my number one. It's my number one worst movie of the year on my other list. But in this move, this this list, I'm tired of talking about it. Severio, so it's not number one. It's number two. I found something just just recently <laughs> that's worse than this for me. Snake Eyes is my number two here. Yep. I know Severo's happy. He's like, yay. Uh, because he enjoyed the film as long and I'm happy for him. Uh, but yeah, I'm done talking about this piece of shit. Uh, I I I I'm stunned. Just completely st- I was in the theater, Rick. Like, yeah, I know. I couldn't believe. I know. <laughs> I was like, who I, destroyed this movie? I matter of fact, we can find out who destroyed this movie because if you <sighs> as you well know, yeah, this movie. Had the same choreographer, right? As Veronica Kenshin, yep. And as Swordsman, yep. It was Tana, it was Kenji Tanigaki, yeah. So you got to ask yourself. You can watch the Swordsman, which I strongly recommend you do. Mm-hmm. You can watch Veronica Kenshin, the, the final in the beginning, which I strongly recommend you do. Yes. And then you watch. Snake then Eyes. go watch Snake Eyes. Yeah. What? Here's this is. Incre- this is for people who want to be filmmakers. This is an incredible lesson of what editing yes. can do to a movie. Mm-hmm. Watch the fight scenes in Snake Eyes. Notice how well they are conceived and how horribly they are edited. And if you know anything about filmmaking, you'll notice that they constantly cut away from the climax of any action. In other words, if I'm going to I'm going to punch Fat Samurai, I would be cut there. <laughs> the Snake Eye guys would have cut me there. They would not have allowed my punch to reach Fat Samurai. And in the at the end of Snake Eyes, where they have like three or four fights going concurrently in four different places. Right. Every single action shot is cut. Every single one just before it culminates. Now, what's fascinating about that, if you study, again, you're trying to make a good movie, trying to make a good movie, a good action movie, a good drama, a good comedy, a good anything. You want setup, you want payoff. 
if you do set up with no payoff, Alfred Hitchcock said this, once you set something up, you are duty bound to pay it off, to release and relieve your audience. I've, I've made a study of this because I've studied cinema. I've written books about it. I've, you know, I've made some stuff. I've written screenplays, shit like that. And it's always about you, you, you can be disemboweled in the editing room with a producer who wants to hurt it. One time when I was at Comic-Con in my 24 years of doing the Comic-Con extravaganza at, Comic -Con, at San Diego, one of the choreographers from a previous installment in the G.I. Joe series came up to me and said, we did this amazing fight scene with these two female characters and we get to the premiere and they completely cut it. I mean, the fight scene's still in it, but they cut away all the climactic moments. Apparently one of the producers, and I'm guessing it's the one whose last name starts with D, seems to think that that's the best way to edit fight scenes. All his fight scenes have to be edited. So there's no payoff in any, even for single moments, not even, let alone ideas, <clears throat> just even a punch. Mm -hmm. and watching Snake Eyes, which could have been one of the best movies of the year, yeah, as designed by Kenji Tanagaki, yes. this literally and figuratively disemboweled in the editing room. And I'm sure it's not the editor's fault. Because an editor a little, wants a little to bit more than that. He does what the director and the producer tells him. To mm, do. Okay, you're probably you're probably right. No one knew you're right. Oh, I'm I'm sure I'm right because I've had but the. I, I always, the yeah, and I always show this. I always show the behind the scenes of them training here. <laughs> hey, that's Tanagaki. That's Tanagaki. Yeah. And you can see everything. <laughs> Go watch the actual scene. Yes. <laughs> and I said, I said that on Saturday. I said, "There's there's fight scenes in the movie where it looks like they're literally surrounded by hundreds of men, hundreds of dudes, but everything's chopped up so bad you feel like they only fought ten and then they went to the next scene." Yeah. I was like, "Wait a minute! They were surrounded by hundreds of of guys. Eco Uwe's wasted, right?" You watch, yeah, oh my God, what a waste. Yeah. Watch Swordsman, watch Rory oh, Kenshin. Mm -hmm. and, and while I was watching those movies, I found at times I was holding my breath. And when, when a sword would strike, I'd go, I'd go, ooh, ooh, ooh. And this is how I was watching Snake Eyes. <laughs> Felt nothing. I was Felt stunned. Nothing. Oh, I forgot then to play I, this. Yeah, then I, I, got forgot, I forgot to play this for you. Uh, uh, this is the stunt double for uh, Morpheus. I forgot to play this for you. Watch this. And that they're just goofing around, going through the motions, and there was nothing like that in Matrix nope. Resurrections. Nope. And also, <laughs> you know, you already know uh, too many fists. The character, all, everybody fights exactly the same. That's still what I call. That's not quite empty movement, but that's close to empty movement. But it's certainly better than anything that's in Matrix Resurrections. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, before we move on, uh, yeah. John, thanks for the super chat. The fight scenes in Cobra Kai are better than the ones in Snake Eyes. They are. How sad is that, guys? <laughs> That's so bad. I was yeah. watching Cobra Kai over here. My wife was in and out, and she said that. She's like, she asked me. So yeah. she was watching one of the fights. Yeah. And she was like, Is this was this better than Snake Eyes? I was like, Yeah. And I was like, again, she's has, like, ouch. Remember what Bruce Lee said. Everything comes back to Bruce Lee. First, the main rule: learn everything you can from everyone you can, then make it your own. Okay. But remember what he said, this, the scene that he wrote and directed in Enter the Dragon, emotional content. Cobra Kai has that in spades. Yep. That, that show is about people hurting themselves mm -hmm. while trying to hurt others. And that's such awesome, awesome show. All right. I'm going to go to my number one. <laughs> And and by all rights, Snake Eyes should be my number one, but I'm tired of beating it up. Uh, I'm going to pick something else. 
Oh, oh man. man, this is fucking garbage, you guys. I'm awake now. <laughs> I wasn't gonna rant. I wasn't gonna rant, but fuck this movie. Fuck this movie. No, it might I reproduce. Don't fuck it. Don't fuck it. <laughs> it. Might reproduce. I am the guy who likes mindless action. I, as long as it's fun, I'm there. I don't care. But all right, crazy fist. Fuck this movie. Oh my god. That was wow. number one on my worst list too. That was number one on my worst. Wow. Wow, Rick. It has been so long since I've seen a martial arts movie this bad. I couldn't believe it. That's the tragedy. That's the tragedy of this. <laughs> Think about what Hong Kong cinema used to be. Think about Crazy Fist. I, I, I oh my God. But with the opening action sequence, I'm laughing. I shouldn't be laughing at your opening action sequence. And I love how it goes Crazy Fist, a champion's final fight. Uh, no, none of that in this. The movie. The movie wants you to think it's a tournament movie, but it's not. Nope. It's not a tournament movie. Look at this shot right here. This is, I'm Samurai Guys excited. I'm like, yeah, woo, we, we're going to see some fighting. This is going to be amazing. No. No. <laughs> Fuck this movie so bad. I love how they advertise uh, bodybuilder Kai Green as the main villain <laughs> in, the, in the trailer and on the box art. And he's in the beginning of the movie. And just jobs out really quickly because he probably can't really do martial arts. I'm not sure. Uh, but, I mean, it, I couldn't believe how dumb. You had a scene where uh, the girlfriend comes in and asks for where this guy is, the, the, the original champion on the right. Yeah. She comes in, where's where's this guy? And the other girl goes, hey, he's outside. So she goes outside, and uh, for, out of nowhere, some thugs jump the, the, the champion. He beats them up, and after he beats them up, they, you know, he he walks up to his girlfriend. They start talking, and then the scene ends. It goes somewhere else, and I'm like, "Who is the girl? Who is that guy? Why did he get jumped? And why are we now cutting to someone going on a date?" And this was like the first 15 minutes of the movie, and there's tons of shit like this. Like, what is happening? This movie's so bad. And then, Rick, why was Colin Chow in this? Oh Again. my. Bruce Leung was in this. Um, yes. Zhao Wei was in this. Yes. I will explain it when we get to my okay. number one, which is also this. Okay. I, I'm, I'm glad you're here because I'm just like, I, Zhao Wei comes in. I'm like, what is going on? She's in I this? I will tell you exactly what's going on. And that I'm scene here. sucked. It was boring. It, like, oh, and then the movie turned, the movie went from this, being called Crazy Fist, a tournament movie. It said, no, fuck your tournament movie. We're gonna go into this, this 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 cop thriller guy undercover plot, and the corruption of the police and the government. I'm like, dude, what? Can we get to the fights? And then when we finally get to the fights, they suck. And this guy right here, this guy on the left, yeah. he's a built dude. You know, he's got the muscoils, right? But I mean, you, the, you, I really couldn't tell if he was really talented or not. Like. I was like, can he do a roundhouse kick? It was kind of hard to tell because the fight scene sucked. And the end fight, I was like, okay, so this guy comes out of nowhere. Oh, my God. I should have got a clip, Rick. I blew it. I blew it. You but I'll tell you. Oh I my know. God. I'm fired. I'm fired. I should have got a clip. But you guys can you know, look it up. I'm sure you can find it on YouTube. So the guy on the right, the champion, he has a fight with Colin Chow. Colin Chow is completely wasted in this fight. This fight sucks. And so, again, this arena here is surrounded by water with crocodiles. I cannot believe you didn't have that shot. I know. I'm sorry. Crocodiles on the outside. And earlier, we have a scene. Okay, they set it up. Earlier, we have our champion come through there, and he sees an old little baby crocodile on the side. Uh, one more time. Crazy fist. <laughs> <laughs> you see a little baby crocodile and he picks up the little baby crocodile and he goes boogly 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 and then he takes it over to the water and throws it in the water to the mama crocodile so the mama crocodile and him they, they lock eyes and fall in love and then later in the movie they have the horrible fight between between him and Colin Chow Colin Chow kicks him in the water and then uh, he's looking for him and then the crocodile free willy style launches our hero i'm not making this up you guys he mm -hmm. launches our hero like this in yeah. the air 
shoots him in the air, and he comes down like this, and Superman punches Colin and knocks him out. This fuck this movie. This is the this is the horrible Rick. Like I, I'm I'm lost for words. I know. <laughs> I should have did this when I was angry after I got done watching the movie. You should have stopped being angry and gotten that shot of that fake looking. I know. I should... Ridiculous CGI move at the end. Let me go through my list and then we'll get to Crazy Fist and I'll explain yes, it please. all. Please go ahead. Go okay. ahead. Number uh-huh. ten on my list is F nine. Okay. Number nine on my list is no. <sighs> Right. Okay. Uh, number eight on my list is Army of the Dead. Zack Snyder unleashed. Just, you know, shredding yeah. our eyes with his many different ways of doing slow motion and filming faces. Yeah. Number seven was Matrix Resurrection. Number right. six was Mortal Kombat. Number five was Zack Snyder's Cut of the Justice League. Specifically, the last 20 minutes. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, because the last 20 minutes was Zach's, that was what right. he did. Or, that was wholly new for his his cut. Right. And that was Zach Snyder undiluted, which was misery <laughs> and anger and uh-huh. darkness and yeah. negativity and bad stuff. Yeah. And so that was uh, number five. Right. Zach Snyder. Number four. Where's my number four? Oh, there it is. Snake Eyes. Still mad. <laughs> yeah. And where you should. Now, number three is my version of Prisoners of the Ghost Land. Now, folks, okay. folks who are watching, everybody who's watching, go to Welco USA and get and take the, I think they still have an, uh, you can get a one month free uh, or you can get, a, you can go to uh, Amazon Prime and get their high streaming service because high streaming service has the exclusives of right. Hydra. Uh, uh, Deed of Death, yeah. uh, um, Swordsman, and Raging right. Fire. You can watch all those and many mm-hmm. more oh, on yeah. the high-eye streaming service. Deliver Us from Evil is fantastic. I just yeah, and also there. they have Undercover Punch and Gun, and Undercover Punch and Gun is a good example of of what Haya does because Haya gets these Chinese movies with these ornate Chinese names, and they give them an American title like right. Crazy Fist, because Crazy Fist is also on the high out streaming service exclusively. And right. so they had another, and I love the fact that they call it, they, they called it Undercover Punch and Gun, because they're like, what are we going to call this Chinese movie? Well, they're undercover operatives who shoot and punch. So we'll call it Undercover Punch and Gun. And we get Crazy Fist, and this is an insane movie. What are we going to call it? We'll call it Crazy Fist. <laughs> and so they had another movie called Crazy Samurai Musashi's 400 versus 1. Right. Which stars Tak, who also was a co-star and the action star of Prisoners of the Ghost Land. Yeah. And Crazy and C- Crazy Samurai is like one shot. Right. The Scott Atkins movies, except n- not with enough, not with as much money or as a much as much time. So Crazy Samurai Musashi has a fight scene that lasts 70 minutes long, a samurai sword fight scene that lasts 70 minutes long. And in order to do the 70 minute one shot fight scene, it necessitated them not to do very ornate sword play because if they do ornate sword play, somebody will screw it up and somebody will get hurt. Mm -hmm. So there's many times during the 70 minute, let me repeat that, one hour and 10 minute fight scene where the villains, and there are 400 of them, just line up and run at the hero. And the hero just runs down them like they're a loaf of bread and goes do, 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 do. And they go do, 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 do. And I defy anybody to get 15 to 20 minutes into this 70 minute fight scene and not start going, Oh, what the, what's going I think I'll play a video game while I watch it. It and what's hilarious is at the very end of the movie, they have like a four minute fight scene with editing. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's an awesome fight scene at the very end. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, it's the best and fight. Also the credits where they show you they showed you backstage, you know, it's far more interesting than the movie itself showing you behind the scenes during the end credits in the last fight scene. 
But basically the last fight, I recently saw a really cool on Netflix. They had a Indian action movie called Sor Bianchi, I think it was. And it's just look up S-O-O-R, you'll find it. Okay. They have three they have three musical numbers. It's a pretty cool movie. It's um it's a part of a um a series that they're doing in India. And at the end of this movie, they have this single best musical number during the end credits. Uh -huh. every, the whole cast, all the extras, they're all singing this song about we're doing whatever we want, fuck you. Right, right, right. They actually have that as the lyrics. <laughs> that's hilarious. Okay. Yeah. And so basically that's what Crazy Samurai Musashi was at the end. They just sort of look at the audience and go, we could have done this the whole time. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> So that was my number three. Okay. My number two was Gold Plated Pooh, Dynasty Warriors. <laughs> and my number one worst movie of the year, okay. worst action movie of the year, and worst movie of the year okay. is Crazy Fist. Oh. Crazy Fist Jeez. makes me very, very, very sad. <sighs> because this is what China wants. China wants Crazy Fist. Yeah is a vanity project the, right. the star of it the old or the old guy who's fighting the african gentleman in that poster yeah the guy on the right there he's the writer the director uh -oh. the star he's probably the choreographer he's probably the makeup guy he's probably he probably supplied the food he's a he is the guy he's playing in the movie he's a rich businessman Wow. So and in China, it was a vanity project then. Yes. When okay. China, rich businessmen don't create rocket ships that are shaped like penises and go off into space, they make these movies. Um, the Alibaba guy, the head of Alibaba, the big Chinese company, he made a short subject and he hired Jet Li, Donnie Yen, Jackie Chan. He hired everybody. <laughs> In that one and that was a short subject that's i didn't even bother watching that because i was angry <laughs> it was it was really interesting well this is another yeah. vanity project yeah. that's he got vicky zhao Wei, who now has been censored by right. the chinese government he got bruce leon to do a dialogue sequence oh. two dialogue sequences and he got colin chow to just stand there and look mad right and the whole and basically this movie is not only astonishing from it's not just terrible action. The whole movie is terrible because outside of Vicky and Bruce and Colin, nobody in this movie can act. Nobody in this movie can hardly even speak. All the female characters, except for Vicky Zhao Wei, right. it's painful to listen yeah. to them yeah. talk. This, and also, it's also painful to hear them to hear what they're saying. There's two women yeah. in it: there's the girlfriend and there's the villainess. Right. They are they are terrible and all. Oh, everybody's terrible and awful. They have nothing to say. They don't know how to say it. This movie is technically proficient because the guy's rich, but right. it is emotionally and intellectually handicapped. I would have used a word that they don't use anymore about the mentally handicapped. <laughs> right, right, right. This movie is, <clears throat> but this is what, but he got to make this. Wu yeah. Jin didn't get to make Wolf Warrior 3. Oh, that's a crime. That was killed. Oh. Dante Lam wasn't able to make another mission operation movie because the oh. Chinese government said, no. This guy got to make Crazy Fist. This got released. So that's why I'm saying, I don't care if you say Raging Fire was boring in point. You've got to embrace Raging Fire because this is the last of its kind. Because if China has its way, it's all going to be crazy fist from now on. Oh. So, you know, here, here I am, the writer of four books, the documentary, the book on Kung Fu films, the man, the consultant for um, uh, Kung Fu Panda, both the original TV show and the original movie. Who yeah. agrees with Poe? I love Kung Fu. And this is what it's coming to. Yeah. My heart, she is broken. <laughs> oh, man. First film of 
it's it's atrocious. I I was stunned how bad. And then, and like you said, even when they try to, oh, let's bring in drama and emotional content, they fail. Do you remember that scene in the club where the, oh, the they they forced God. the girl to dance? That yeah. was so bad. Well, she was fully she was fully clothed. It's not like they made her take her clothes off or they were forced. You know, like she was fully clothed dancing in the club for them. The bad guys are making her do it. Yeah, and she starts. She the the worst, or probably the, maybe the unsexy, the most unsexiest dance ever. And and then she starts crying. It's if it's like a, a oh, I'm humiliated. It's like they they didn't even do anything. You're on the, you're in you're fully dressed dancing. You know where they got and then, that. Oh, it's such a horrible scene. And then the, the and then the villains, the gangsters are like, oh, we've gone too far. Yeah, but you know where they got like, that. Oh my god! But you know where they got that scene? Where? That was Birds of Prey. Oh, the Birds of Prey scene where that where the villain, uh, what's his name, okay. makes that woman fully dressed get up on the table and dance. Oh, it, all that right. Was terrible I... in that movie too. <laughs> That's where they got it. This guy was making it up as he went along. Oh, oh, so bad. And you got people who couldn't improvise improvising. Yeah, and and. and they uh, and uh, the guy on the left here, the undercover uh, guy, yeah. he's undercover, the fighter, yeah. the, the 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 officer, like immediately forced comedy, yeah. like the officer who's like helping him with his case. So I'm like, yeah. what is happening, man? Yeah, but yeah. It's... And the meanwhile, the Chinese government is going, keep up the good work. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, it's atrocious. It's whew, it's, man. It's... It's astonishing to watch. Now that you know these guys, if you go on Haya and you want to watch Crazy Samurai, you want to watch Swordsman, you want to watch Raging Fire and all these other yeah. good movies, take a look at Crazy Fist. You'll never forget it. <laughs> or at least skip to the end. We see the goddamn crocodile launching the guy oh in God. the air. Next time we do a versus, man, yeah. just get to that I'll clip. find it. I'll, I'll just find do, it. Just do I'll clip. leave it in here. I'll leave it in here so yeah, we can always yeah. click on it. <laughs> so oh, really, oh, hold on. It was a very good year. It was a good year. Yeah. There was some great stuff for sure. Yeah. For sure. Uh, we got MK here. MK, certified badass channel member. Uh, he said the Scorpion versus Sub-Zero fight is as good as any other film high-level martial artists. I don't think anyone can hate the fighting in Mortal Kombat. Not well, hate it, but not like it as much as it should have because it's truncated. Right. It, is not, it is not set up well, and it's not paid off well. And yeah, and our, our complaints, MK, weren't the opening and the ending fights. Yeah. <laughs> it's everything in the middle. Yeah, the short is the problem short, with that movie. It doesn't it doesn't culminate into everything. It's just yeah. yeah. But, but yeah, we're good. happy that you enjoyed it, my friend. As long and as again, you enjoyed it, that's all that matters. It's, yeah, it's good even if you enjoyed Crazy Fists, as long as you enjoyed it, that's all that matters. Uh, but fuck that movie. Yeah, seriously. I, I, oh. Again, don't fuck it. It can reproduce. If you <laughs> I have to keep on explaining these simple things. You guys want to be badasses, and I, I'm going good asses. Be great asses. Be great asses. Oh shit! We got uh, yeah. director Matt Moret Moret here. What's going on, man? He says keep from Keep Forward Productions. I recommended Extreme uh, to him. He loved it. So cool. Good. And also now look, the, look, look at the last, the Lost Bullet. Check out the lost. Yes, bullet. I'm gonna. I might watch that uh, this week for sure. Yeah. Great picks uh, from uh, Kung Fu Santa himself. Great picks. Uh, was there anything else before we wrap it up today? This was fun. It was a good year. I'm looking this this next year. I mean, I've just been blessed. I've waited all my life to be in a viewing situation that I'm in today with the stuff, all the streaming, all the movies that everything. They're giving, they're, giving, they're honoring uh, these great, these great uh, fr uh, universes and imagination and great comedy, great animation, great drama. I mean, there's, if you, if you can't find something good to watch, you're not trying hard. Or you're trying too hard and you come across Crazy Fist. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, it happens. If you review I'm movies not, like I'm us, not, we're gonna we're gonna come across it. Unfortunately, it's unavoidable. <laughs> oh, but Rick, uh, brother Rick, this was fun. As uh, always, you guys. Yes, yes. As uh, as always, uh, everyone's been asking about verses, verses. Where is verses? Uh, verses this week, probably not going to happen. Uh, next week, we'll see. Most likely, it's not going to happen because Samurai's got some other things I got to tidy up 
And uh, but uh, it will return. We will get verses back up here. Uh, return for sure. Uh, but you guys know what you need to do: subscribe, the old samurai guy, if you haven't already. Thanks for hanging out with us and watching and liking and sharing the video. Uh, keep watching movies, man. That's right. Represent the action genre, baby. That's right. The western, the kung fu, the samurai. And don't accept crap. Don't accept crap. Because yes. Great stuff out there if you look for it. That's right. Don't accept crazy fist. <laughs> Embrace Burn it. Burn it to the ground. Choke it. Get it in a Choke it. Hole. Choke Don't slam it. it. Yeah. Kill it. Don't yeah, kill it. it. Kill it with fire. <laughs> Don't, uh, but yeah. it. Don't fuck it. Kill it. Don't forget to follow Rick as well as information is in the description box below of this video. And uh, we'll see you badasses. Uh, oh, oh, I forgot. I forgot. A uh, segue. Uh, we're keeping it action in martial arts uh, tomorrow, guys. If you guys are awake tomorrow early at 11 a.m., Samurai Guy's going to be hanging out with martial artist, stuntman, actor, and director Michael Hode, all the way from the U.K. is going to be hanging out with us tomorrow at 11 a.m. So make sure you guys stop by and say hi. And again, like I said before, keep watching action movies. Represent the genre. That's right. And uh, we'll see you badasses next time. Take care. <laughs>